Right, today's game of the day is not really going to be a full game of the day. What's going on is I've got a lot of small clips that I've been saving as bonus clips, but are lengthy enough, and I kind of need to clear my hard drive out now, that I'll just put those up on their own production. So clip number one, here we are playing a core necro. It's not actually going to be about the start of the game, it's going to be towards the end of the game, uh, where we're going to scroll all the way back to, I guess about here we will be fine, uh, and we'll just watch how we're doing. Um, so core necro, I'm going to give you a proper video on soon, I think, and hope. Uh, this got significantly buffed with the recent patch. You've already seen me playing it, you know, maybe 20 episodes ago or so. Um, it was significantly buffed. It reshuffled around some of the traits you take. Maybe I can do a proper highlight on it for you all. But uh, Terror is a pretty easy pick now and a pretty smart pick. For a long time, I was running Path of Corruption, which makes this corrupt. Uh, but basically, Aristocracy plus Terror... It's, it's kind of my dream build flavor-wise, and it's not bad. I promise it's not bad. Against certain builds, uh, it's really quite excellent. So here we are against a core guard. This isn't really what the bonus clip's about. I, I may have just rebounded a bit too early. Here, that daze was really important that we got on the Whale of Doom. Obviously, we've been caught in a very bad position with no shroud. Uh, I've dragged him back towards spawn, I think is what's going on. And uh, this, this uh, soul beast, beautiful. Look at him use natural convergence there and heal me up. I think that's the one. And he gives us he gives us resist as well. There I dip out of Shroud in a really ugly way. Uh, and the core guard's doing very well, to be honest. Back into Shroud. We get the extra corrupt and whatnot. Anyway, uh, hopefully we show what the clip is actually about now. I'm blue and we are obviously in a losing position, or were, until I dragged that core guard to spawn. Got the quick plus from my uh, soul beast ally. And now what we're doing is we're looking to win the game by snowballing to far. So I don't actually know the positioning of anyone at the moment. So uh, I'm pu pulling up round mid just in case someone's gone around the back is going to decap. We already had a side noder who'd successfully neutralized and had full health. And we've got uh, an Ellie going in as well. So they're going to be pretty sustainy. So I could be racing to far right now. I don't think that that's necessarily what's needed. Um, but yeah, I'm coming around the back just making sure that Keep doesn't get neutered because we really need that, right? Everywhere else is neutral. And I'm also banking on us winning this fight, but we, we've clearly beat the, uh, the rev down there now. So here's the idea of the bonus clip. Why not to beast? I mean, it's a really basic kind of newbie thing. And I know a lot of you guys watching this aren't total noobs. And you don't like all the pause in. But I do think about noobs a lot when I'm, uh, I'm doing this. Look at the score and stuff. Imagine you're in my situation. This boss might look really tempting, okay? you got to imagine as well. I mean, you don't really know the potency of this build. But it can burst a lot of Condi out. Very, very heavy. Very hard. And you might think, oh, I can kill that in just a couple of seconds. And we'll equalize. Look at this, right? If I kill that beast, we're actually going to go up to like four, you know, we'll equalize on their point score. And isn't that like a guaranteed win? Isn't this a really good beast? Look, their enemy's kind of near, but they're distracted by the fight anyway. Isn't that going to be really frustrating for them to leave the fight, come all over the way over here? Aren't they going to blow cooldowns and maybe be vulnerable? Hmm. That's what might be going through your head. I'm going to say no to the beast. I'm going to save all my cooldowns and not use them on the beast. Instead, I'm going to prioritize the fight. The two tanky guys we were talking about earlier. Remember that this is far point, and there will be respawns going in there. So I'm going to go and do this fight. And basically, by making this decision to do the fight instead of the beast, we have to win this fight, but not only to justify it, but then not only that, we also ha have to, like, feel like we did something over there. So let's see if this was a correct play. Remember that respawns as well as I'm fighting that beast could easily steal this, but I'm not even talking about that. I'm just talking about my own time management here. I'm not going to go beast. So, let's go for the fight. As we get up, people still seem reasonably healthy, and we know that we have tanky people, but they've just become outnumbered, and that's become a, a thing right as I've come in. So, by not going beast, these valuable seconds here, I've turned this, their outnumber, into a um, uh, an equal numbers fight, a 3v3, right? We've just added two people. I come in, and I elite immediately on the node. It's slightly off point. But this is, uh, you know, a, a very strong elite if you get it properly on the node. Uh, and so we're going to watch out, instead of using that on the boss or whatever to get the quick kill, we're going to watch that slowly tick insane condi out onto my opponents here. So we've just started. We drain through our shroud. Um, we see this guy's in Reaper Shroud and has given himself stab. So we, uh, with his skill three. Um, so we've just used Corrupt Boon and feared him away. He's walked for another tick into the elite. Oh dear, he's starting to get a lot of condi. Now, one of our allies is down, 
But you'll see here that our condition torment as well killed the soul beast. So not only, I've been focusing on the reaper, but we've actually helped pressure out the soul beast here. So this is really good. And this, this reaper's about to die in a tick or two because, you know, he's got so much bleed and stuff. Now what I see is... Um, as the Reaper realizes his mistake and is dying as he dodges the way, there's a stomp going on from this enemy warrior or something. Uh, so I, I fire Wail of Doom and an immune triggers on Wail of Doom. So with this, I know that he's got stab. So I, it, this is in the middle of the, the stomp. I try and Wail of Doom. It doesn't work. So I take the target on the Spellbreaker and immediately hit Corrupt Boon because I know Wail of Doom equals stab. And it turns out it was a Rampage stomp. So we get the Corrupt Boon. We interrupt the stomp there at the end. The Reaper's now dead because of us. We've saved the safe stomp. A full counter comes through, but it's too late for him to chop heal sig or whatever. We go into shroud and we swing. If we were at boss, this three v this two v three for my allies would never have meant a damn thing. Okay, now we've just got fifteen points, which is almost you know creeping up on the point score the boss would have given us, right? From the win, so we've been reimbursed all of that. And look at how that's turned into basically a three cap for my team. When now we have the luxury of a beast if we really want it. Because they're all on goddamn respawn. Okay. So what would you rather take? A three cap or just a couple of points. And then this, this fight falls against us. And I'm alone against three people. And I die. And they get extra points. It's so rarely worth going for the beast. All right. I know I've had a lot of legitimate questions. They sneak up on Wood of Potatoes too every now and then. Why is it a bad idea to go for it? Um, so often. And I hate that I'm telling you this, by the way. Because I think that map mechanics should be used. As and here, look, now now my warrior gets on it. Which, you know, is is fine, I think, at this point. Uh, but I can come and give, you know, pills and make sure that he's fine by warding this guy off. By zoning him away with the mobs and stuff, as you can see here. Um, I hate that I'm telling you not to go beast. Because I think map mechanics should be used. But the problem is, right now, they don't give enough. They probably need to give more point score. But the, re the reason I'm reading it don't give them more point score is likely because that accelerates the the duration of, of matches on, on this, this map too fast. Um, already, if you are in a game where no one's stealing and th the team is constantly farming them back and forth while also very comfortably winning, which happens... Um, you know, they keep the, the the games end very quickly, so they don't want to change the, the the points. And then, as for the attribute buffs, maybe they could buff that, but they might be reticent to do that because then they feel like the game become it, it's it's unfair when you're losing. But I don't know, Colosseum works very well, and the artifacts there are extremely potent and don't even have a point score. So I don't know, maybe that's the answer to buff those. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's just so rarely a good idea. And it would have been a terrible idea if I had done it there on that game. I would have made it so much more uh, uh, risky than it had to be. Uh, have some courage in your ability to fight. And you'll get the stuff done. Even on a core necro. Alright, so anyway, that that's bonus clip one. And you see, these bonus clips, there was a lot I wanted to say on each of them. So, uh, you know, they'll be their own, their own video. Next game, I guess, is uh, Legacy again. Uh, we're on Power Firebrand. This is a build I've played a lot of, but I, I haven't shown you because I haven't had that dream game just yet, you know, that, that really highlights the strength of this. So essentially, uh, this was buffed by the patch again, one of the reasons I was looking at it. Uh, you get Fury on the axe now, right? Um, which means you don't ha necessarily have to run swords or medis. An axe on a power build hits really hard, funnily enough. So I'm actually axe, uh, you can think of this a lot like a reaper, I'm not even joking. Uh, you dip into the F1 and you're like a melee oriented powerhouse that you burn through very quickly. So I have Scepter for a bit of poke potential. We could talk a lot about the build. It actually, the genesis of this came from me trying to work with a, a, a trait called, um, I can't remember, I can't remember what the trait's called, but it triggers an effect called Mystic Rebuke, which is when you apply Aegis, it breaks and deals damage. And I was playing this in low rated queues where I was hoping to find minion monsters because then if you splash Aegis out onto minion monster and they get cleaved, all the minions explode for like 600 damage or something. So you get five times 600 every time you use a source of Aegis, which on Firebrand is a lot, right? So you do that and you also put out really strong retail on them. And it's just really funny. Uh, the reason I got inspired is because I got cleaved down massively by Mystic Rebuke in a game where, or, or at some point. I can't remember what build I was on. Um, and it was kind of amazing to see on the combat log, like 6,000 damage came in. So anyway, the more I played P Power Fire Brand, you know, I started on Feel My Wrath. I was like, oh, it's all about offensive support. Uh, eventually, I just started adding more and more and more mantras. I'm still on retreat on this particular game for the ages. Um, 
but yeah, the, the 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 patch gives you fury. This is a Valkyrie amulet as well. It's kind of like where core guard, I suppose, in that sense, because it's righteous retaliation um, meets firebrand. Anyway, I want to show you uh, just how deadly this thing is. It's it's a build that you cannot trade blow for blow, head to head. If all cooldowns are up on both sides, you cannot do it. This this mantra is. A ton of damage, but also ridiculous amounts of incapacitating conditions. So we have, like, I think I'm Balefire runes here as well. I, I could talk about that later. But basically, you have immense blind, weakness, cripple, immobilize, slow, uh, uh, vulnerability. You stack, like, 25 vulnerability instantly. Any condition that exists in the game, any, aside from taunt, that, does, that doesn't do damage, this build just heaves out. But it's also reasonably vulnerable. In team fights, it's, it's a nuke. It really is. Uh, I think that this is the most damage I have done over the past year in the shortest window of time in Conquest uh, in the past year, as I said, which is crazy. So you're going to see this, right? It's actually a really beautiful mid, and that's this is all the bonus clip is, is the opening mid here. So we're a power fire brand. We're squishy. We're not going to be pushing the line. Uh, but we, we can support other people, obviously. Even though we don't have heal power, we do get support. So here's a good example of the poke ability of scepter you can drop the little symbol up there one of my guys pushes forwards so the marks kind of haze us back a little bit bit of weakness and stuff we're not we're not too happy with that what we want is the t enemy team to clutter together a bit better right uh, so that when we use our mantra it splashes over all of them uh just waiting for opportunity our scourge dipping on so heavy is kind of concerning to me i go f3 to sort of protect and help our ellie here has got armor of earth procced don't know why. Uh, we go, uh, we see that this guy's getting pew pew by the longbow, so we drop the skill three over it. But the enemy uh, firebrand drops a line right as I'm casting, so I get interrupted. That's a bit lame. Hold the line is really important here. So don't forget as well, while we're on this kit, we are splashing out ages, and we're getting like 500 here, 580 here. This guy only took 300s. Maybe that was a different animation, or maybe protection reduces the mystic rebuke. <laughs> I, I don't know. Anyway, we're just trying to find our opportunity. Um, having cast that now. The enemy team has uh, grouped together a bit better. And uh, we put another bubble. And now I decide it's time for damage. This guy's gone down. So it's likely the enemy team will clutter around this. At least one of them will. And they're all in pretty much good cone uh, room. So what I've probably done at this point is about 1,000 damage. And now we're in the F1 kit. So we use the skill 4. We're going to auto and we're going to spam our pressure mantra. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We can throw stability on ourselves and retaliation on ourselves just to be sure we'll have it anyway because we get so much whenever our aegis breaks but uh we'll cast this for the bit of stab and just to cover it and we're just gonna burn through people in these next few seconds look we've absolutely annihilated this guy my ally goes in for the res and my pressure wards them off so they can't stomp through that which is beautiful we've run out of the kit we get the scepter two up splash out our shield four which on a power build actually does pretty reasonable damage you saw that crit like 3k ish uh, the axe symbol goes down. We pull him into the axe symbol. We get a stomp. That's beautiful. This wasn't looking like a good team fight originally, was it? Well, we get the stomp. We have weakness on us, but we're getting a lot of different numbers out right now. Um, and with the stomp, that refreshes our F1. So I try an F1, but I get feared. So then I give myself the stab mantra, and then I get corrupted. So I'm feared again. It's okay. We can drop the axe again. That's more fury. Drop the scepter too. So we kind of have both symbols over three players right now. We go into F1. And just, I mean, look at the pressure here. It's, I mean, these aren't small numbers, guys. This is like 8,700, 8,000, 7,000. It's crazy. And we just <laughs> melt through them. Beautiful. Um, and in that little window there of maybe 7 to 10 seconds at the end of the mid fight, we went up to 93,000 damage. We got 100k mid. And that's not like when you're a scourge and you get 100k mid, which is fairly common. But, you know, that's like attrissively done over a 30 to 40 second mid fight that we just burst out and i mean it was beautiful so that's kind of the strength of this build if it can get the right position in a team fight its vulnerability of course is uh how easily it's pressured um i actually think it would do okay with a support maybe not a firebrand support because you overlap a lot of the kind of utility you give each other maybe maybe a uh, a tempest support would be pretty nice to to sustain this guy though there are more compelling synergies to me um 
Uh, yeah, anyway, I'm running this on Valkyrie. There are other variants as well. There's a very popular Harrier variant that people use. And on this second team fight, you see I get melted out, which is a shame. We were going for the Snowball, by the way. That Snowball could have been really good if our Warrior had been... The Warrior should be in one of two positions right now, in my opinion. He should be on Beach or around here so that he can watch both entrances from the enemy team, as this one's likely to be guarded by us, okay? Or he should be team fighting with us, taking the second 5v5 and we win the whole game. Instead, he's going for the beast. I've played fairly poorly there and just got myself melted out. We're going to lose this fight and it's going to become a regular game now. Or we win somehow another thing and it was a boring enough game that I didn't want it for a game of the day. Anyway, there you go. Power Firebrand. Um, pretty fun. And the other big clip I want to show you. This clip is possibly, without a doubt, all right, the best ending to a Conquest game. I've ever played, Me well, in recent memory anyway, that, that I can remember, uh, and I say that as in, you know, when you remove, uh, like, uh, external factors, like, skill level of players, intense, is it a tournament, is it, you know, uh, are there rivalries, all those kinds of things that can make games get your adrenaline going, you can care a lot more about games, this is essentially uh, a lame, uh, uh, ranked queue, you know, just a casual ranked queue, so, in that sense, it's, you know, it's not necessarily a great game, however, I'm talking about the game type. I'm talking about what experience Conquest has to offer. This is the best ending I think I've ever had. And you'll see what I mean. So I'm skipping ahead to the end of the game. You'll notice that we've just um, lost a fight at Hammer. And uh, before this played, it was uh, it was clear to me we were losing this. So I've come to far for a decap. So this is a really, really bad position because the enemy team's about to neutral all our, our points. They have a significant lead over us. And now two of us are dead. So it's a 3v5 for the next little while. Uh, this is looking like a loss. It's really important that we stall them so until our team gets back and we can do things, which is why this neutralizer I've just made I think is pretty high value. I, you know, so right now we're on an Axe Mirage. Um, pretty standard. This is after the portal nerf, which I'm playing around with. And by the way, I still think has a lot of use. People have really pooed themselves and walked away from it in a big way there. But I, I still think I've got a lot of value out of portal. So anyway, I neutralize fart and port it. That will allow me to... Uh, stall them at mid here as well. I'm going to be 1v2, but in theory, what I can do is if I get too low, I can just save my own life with the portal. Or I can stall them here until one of the enemy team tries to cap far, and then I can port over, right? So that's what I'm going to try and do. I can't get on until the hammer's over, because yes, I could dodge, but I don't get any like infinite horizon value and stuff out of that. So it's just me here, 1v2, and I just need to stop them getting this node if I can, and blow cooldowns if I can. We have to win a big engagement here at this point. So now if you look at the minimap, you see something really frustrating has happened. My warrior is pushing to point C, which uh, I did a game of the day a couple of days ago where I, I showed the third party perspective from this. Him pushing point C makes the extra time value I get out of only going for a decap null because I, well, I may as well just full capped that then. Not only that, but he's dragging a necro there as well. The reason he's probably going point C is because he just thinks, oh, that's my role. I, I, I need to be at far all the time. And he doesn't know that I have a portal and, and all that other stuff, right? So, but it's 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 a waste of time. The best thing he could have done is come here with me right away. We could have 2v2'd this, and if it went bad, we could have ported out together. Um, but so, that's pretty clunky. Also, close point is struggling. My daredevil was one of the other players who wasn't dead at the start of this clip, I think. Uh, has been struggling to hold that. Uh, but he at least gets reinforcements coming in now. So anyway, I can't really get on that node. I'm getting hit too hard, and I do let them get the full cap. I try at the last second here with this illusory ambush, but they've already capped it. I jaunt off. One really nice thing does happen, though. The enemy Scourge does blow his elite, which will be very relevant later. If we're going to win this game, we have to team fight this mid eventually. These two are just going to bunk it because they know that they'll, they'll win on points or, you know, in general. Especially if they get five points off of me for a kill. So I have to be extremely cautious of that as well, you understand. Um, so denying now that elite for the next big team fight is huge. You'll notice that the clock is very low as well, 1 minute 30. So it's not, it's not, in terms of players and stuff, it's not necessarily a ranked queue I care too much about. But it has been an intense ranked game. So I'm, I'm low on cool, cooldowns now. I come down. Um, I know that this, so here, I'm about to jump back up. I can't remember what my tip off was to jump back up. Uh, maybe I jump back up because I see that the Mesmer went down after me. 
And there's obviously only two. I burst my mobility along. I did want to get on the node, but it seemed a bit too late. I'm very low, obviously. Just waiting for allies to get in. So, now, now the game shifted in a big way as well, really nicely. My warrior did beat the Scourge. So, hats off to him, at least on that. And so, the enemy team is now in respawn. That Scourge is going to respawn and come to point B. He won over on far, and my, my other three players managed to win their outnumbered on close now. So, we've won sides, and it's now down to point B. Uh, which is where I've been established. Kind of a misplay from me. If I had opened my portal a couple of seconds earlier, I could have ported the, the, the warrior in, and that would have been really beautiful. Um, but I didn't know if he was winning his matchup at the time, and as you can see, I was a little bit distracted by the fight too. I, I don't have the IQ for that at the moment, I guess. Um, and also, you know, that's the new portal timing. I, the, the nerf has just happened, and a lot of my muscle memory is that it'd still be there at the moment. Anyway, uh, look at them jumping up and down on this. I know that they're doing that because they, they win the game with that node. So, uh, we have to get on it. I'm watching my allies' rotations right now, and I see I've got my core guard. This, we haven't seen on the, the clips yet, because we haven't interacted with him, but he's a core guard, and I know I've got a thief, so they can jump in hard. So, even though I'm pretty vulnerable, I know he's going to want to jump in hard when he gets around in range, and so am I. And we get a really beautiful jump. Watch this. Illusory ambush right as he's nearby, and right as I push in with my ambush, he jumps in as well. Look at that. And the thief. I think, and the thief. Yeah, it's great. So, we hit that Scourge super hard. A Scourge who doesn't have an elite to ward us off or anything anymore. And he gets blown up. Juicy. We have... So, now let's look. This is the bonus clip for real now, right? It's 480. We have to win this node. And it's going to come down to the last seconds. Uh, and me letting them get that full cap earlier is going to seem a bit punishing here. So, anyway, I help them cleave it out. And we, br we kill the body right as an illusion of life lands. Look at this. Illusion of life. Um... I actually love that skill as a part of a Reaper duo at the moment. If you play with a really Reaper glassy, uh, really glassy Reaper friend, um, the beautiful thing about Illusion of Life is they can hide in Shroud for the 15 seconds, and they're very unlikely to get full defeated. So if it's in the middle of a, of a team fight where cooldowns have been blown and stuff, Illusion of Life can be really high value again for the game at the moment, which is kind of cool. Um... In, in casual ranked queues, I'm saying. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, we take the pressure. Uh, we've got the second down. We've got the third down. It's tricky here because I've kind of bottomed out a little bit. I need to be more patient with my shatters and stuff to start building a bit of momentum. But I, I, I'm scared that I can't be patient because, look, they're 490 points. We have to win this, right? And this scourge that's just come on is the one that died to the warrior. So, you know, they're zerging on knowing that this is a safe win condition for them here. Um... Now, you might criticize this Scourge and say he should have gone to point C and maybe full capped, but he might not have time for that. And you're going to see one of his other allies makes that decision in a second, and it's too late, right? We are rapidly gaining points here. We're going to get another five for this kill. So if you watch here, we, we clear that down. We, we got that with the confusion there. One of our allies stomps, okay? And so now if you look, a warrior's come on the node, right? He's, he's flooded with the node. So the warrior is their last defense. The warrior just has to die on node. And he'll probably stall it till the red team wins. Right? Even better, he gets a full counter and an axe three. And he puts me into down state. So I'm currently pooing myself. Because I'm thinking, oh god, I've just given them five points. It's the end of the game. No, no, no. Uh, and my allies see it quickly. They res me quickly. We get a will of blood. Something else happens in the middle of that res, though, that you have to look at very closely. There's a lot of, like, little minutia plays here, right? So watch. The warrior comes on right as the stomp goes in. So that's nice timing there. But we did get one point of decap. Now watch where we get another. While I'm down state, the warrior does that and, like, flees. Huge mistake from this warrior here. Watch, watch, watch. He's trying to leave the node. He's shield bashing off the node there. Um... And the only reason he... Ca which gives us another point of decap. Crucially, we're on one tick of decap. But he gets pulled back. Um, I think by a tether. Was it? Yeah, he's pulled back by a tether because our warrior's gone back a bit. So our warrior has just tethered their warrior back on. We would have decapped and won the game there. But because of the tether and our warrior pulling off like that, we don't. So anyway, everyone goes to the res. They pick me up. Nice. This... what The enemy warrior... Uh, takes him away to the side and moves back on. He knows. He stays on the corner. This is beautiful. He gets another kill, so I help to res this. And I use diversion to interrupt whatever he's doing. So we got that. And he goes down now. Okay. So <laughs> all of this has happened now. This is how we've got to the last tick. And like I said, as far as the gameplay manifest, the, the game type manifests, this is the best thing that can happen on Conquest. Watch. 
We're 498. They're 498 points. Next seconds. They're 499. We cannot stomp this, can we? It, it's it's impossible. We've lost this game. And I'll tell you the truth. In the moment, while I was playing this, ever since I went down, I was thinking the maths didn't work out and we'd lost it. One final thing to look at now is that we're being decapped on point C. So do you remember what I said about that scourge that wandered in and died just to stall the cap? And you might have been thinking, oh, shouldn't you have gone to decap? Well, <laughs> one of the enemy team decided that was a good play eventually. But it's way too late. The enemy that did this threw the game for his team. Because or if he had just walked here, he could have just stood here. All he needed was W, A, and D. It has nothing to do with his build or combat skills. It's pure rotations. And he lost it for his team by going there. A little bit too late. Now, here's the thing. You might be thinking, well, WP, what do you mean he lost it for his team? Red's about to win here. Is Red about to win? Because look, at the last second, where we can't possibly do anything about this body, in the last second, my core guard comes bombing in. Banish, baby, in the last... I mean, that wasn't even the last second. That's like the last tick of the last second. We get the neutralized. Now, nice bit of coding you can see on ArenaNet's end here. The, the D ticks are synced to every other beat of the points, I think. Or it calculates the D tick before the point acquires and that's actually relevant here which makes that hype as all hell we get the neutralize with the banish at the last second the full damage might have even killed that guy greatest knock eu uh what a game and there you go so that is the end of uh, a very 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 close conquest match um that we actually won it in the end with a very hard fight for mid thrown by one of the red players who went to point c at the end absolutely uh, but our core guard with the banish at the last moment, love it. It was very, very, very cool. And so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed these bonus clips on today's game of the day. Uh, feel free to talk about the merits of Beast and, you know, us being able to swing that team fight there. You can talk about Power Firebrand and doing a lot of damage or, or this very cool last game here. I don't mind. Just comment on any of it would be cool. And I'll see you tomorrow.